Hey, this is Blue State Rob, and you're listening to the Eric Zane Show podcast, a show hosted by a liberal Republican whose ancestry dates back to the small country of Armenia and fueled by bouts of anxiety and adult attention hyperactivity disorder, also known as ADHD. It's not the best, but still better than radio. Anyway, here's your host, Eric Zane. I sat down here, straight up 8 o'clock. It's like, okay, time to start the show. And then I noticed that the iPad is at 1% power. And I, I have to have that. So I'm like, oh, God, there's nothing worse. I get up, march, get the charger. Of course, I only have one of them. Welcome into the Eric Zane Show podcast. This is a daily show where I discuss news, nonsense, and my personal adventures each, excuse me, each and every day of the week, work week. And uh, this is uh, show number 735. Uh, I'm kind of in that, uh, did you hear that lip smack? I'm, I'm in a terrible habit lately of doing that. I've noticed it uh, when I listen back and like uh, edit up parts of the show, you know, uh, I'm like, oh God, I'm smacking my lips. I sound like huge. Bill does that. Like he'll uh, do one of his segments on a show and I'll have, oh, we're do- talking to uh, Jim Camperoni, Spartan insider. And then the guy talks Spartan football. And then when the guy gets done with his thought, Bill starts talking, he goes, Right before he starts talking. I got to eliminate that. Radioinc.com. I'll post the link so you can check this out. Uh, This article is titled by Ed Ryan. What's the best way to terminate someone? It was posted yesterday. On the three-year anniversary of the podcast but it was inspired by two days earlier on my fire versary this is what ed wrote our story about dale dudley and waterloo was our number one viewed story wednesday i don't know what that means must be a radio team or something like that So we thought we'd highlight a few of the comments from that story and also get more of your feedback on what you believe is the best way to part company with a longtime on-air host. So he's doing an article about how to fire someone. Dudley, who'd been on the air in Austin, Texas for 35 years, went on social media and told his audience that he'd been fired. Waterloo Media... Okay, I thought that was the name of the guy. I thought the show was called Dale Dudley and Waterloo in the Morning. Uh Waterloo Media sent out a press release stating Dudley was not fired. His contract wasn't renewed. That's a cute thing of Waterloo Media to do, but he was fired. After reading our story Wednesday, Jackson Dell Weaver wrote, this was poorly managed all around. Waterloo handled it poorly. It was the termination of a major on-air talent, not a plant services contract, and Dudley was in denial if he didn't anticipate the end of his agreement and advocate for whatever he wanted to happen next. No one gets out of this one with clean boots. When he says Waterloo handled it poorly, there's really only one way to handle it. And that is, uh, let them think that they're in a great position to be, uh, either be, uh, uh, a contract extension or not fired. And then at a laughy jokey moment, say, Hey, can I talk to you for a minute in the office? Yeah, I got I got to I got to talk to you. I got a great story for you. As soon as you get in there, 
You got like the engineer there who's probably armed. The HR person is right there and you got a box and you go, hey, we're cutting you loose. Get out. That's it. Short and sweet. Hit the road. It's time for you to move on. That's showbiz. Albeit radio showbiz. It's still showbiz. Get your shit. In fact, get out now. And typically, sometimes uh, when I got fired uh, on my fireversary, I was fired at home. And then I had to drive by with my, and then uh, the Crystal, the HR lady, had my shit in a box on the corner outside of the radio complex. And I had to drive by, go, ah, thanks a lot. Smell you later. Bye bye. So I guess all these radio people are weighing in on it. So then uh, this, uh, this article, which again is titled The Best Way to Terminate Someone, next paragraph. On his January 4th podcast every year, former Grand Rapids radio host Eric Zane retells the story about his firing every year. He's recovered nicely. Thank you, Ed. Having launched a successful daily podcast and has fun with his final radio firing experience, calling it his fireversary. Before I continue, you need to check this out because it includes the picture of Pellerito behind me with his sandwich board signs and me with a stupid look on my face. Ed continues. Zane, who had a bad case of the flu at the time, was called at home by the PD and was told he was out. That seems to be the typical way radio terminates on-air hosts. I don't agree with that at all. Eliminating any possibility for the host to use the microphone to badmouth the company or seek sympathy from the audience. Social media is the go-to platform now for hosts who want to fill their audience in. Uh, yeah, th- that's true. But typically, you finish your show on a Friday and you're like, man, we really killed it today. We really had a hell of a show. And they go, come on in. Two months earlier, your, de- your decision has been made or the decision about you has been made. I'll be uh, drinking coffee for the first part of this show. Uh, Welcome in. Welcome to the audience on Twitch. Thank you so much. We are slowly but surely building that audience. I remember from humble beginnings, I was happy with 200 people following on Twitch. We are 344. And the way you build Twitch is, uh, is one at a time. It is old school one at a time. So if you are listening to the audio podcasts uh, later on in the day or whatever, Or if you're just finding out about this now, please follow me on Twitch. Twitch. Twitch Twitch.com or twitch.tv slash Eric Zane live. Eric Zane, all one word, and it's E-R-I-C. Please follow there. Just hit the follow button. And if you're really feeling, uh, you know, uh, uh, surly, not surly. What's the word I'm looking for? Froggy. I don't know why I was thinking for that word. Subscribe. Get a subscription. Uh, You can get that for free with your Amazon Prime account. There's a big button right there. It says subscribe with Amazon Prime, and that helps your old pal Eric Zane. One of the many ways, uh, without basically doing anything, you can help the show grow. All right. Uh, Irvine's Auto Repair Grand Rapids Hybrid NEV bringing you my uh, spot on Twitch, the live stream. And uh, also, bringing you my Facebook page. Follow the show on Facebook, facebook.com slash Eric Zane fan page. I think O'Neal's about to puke or something. You all right over there, big guy? Something was going on. I'm on Twitter, at Eric Zane Show on Twitter. Please follow on Twitter. Brought to you by Blue Frost IT. So you can uh, keep up to date with things going on with the podcast, me picking fights with people, and things like that. Um, and then on uh, YouTube... Brought to you by Frank Fuss, My Policy Shop Insurance, Eric Zane Show on YouTube. I'm trying to get in the habit of when I post something that I know is going to piss someone off, when they respond, just not responding to their response. That is the key. It's like in the NFL, you know? If you push someone, you don't get penalized. It's the retaliation that they always throw the flag on, you know? So I have to keep that in mind. Hang on. I got to drink this coffee. I'm in such a good mood. 
Don't have to plow snow today. That was a that was tough. Even with a two stage snowblower, that was not easy. There was a lot of snow. My God, it seems like we're good now, at least for the time being. Uh, where we're stuck, one of the few spots in the uh, United States that can get hammered quite easily with uh, lake effect snow. I'm just barely in the crosshairs of it. Uh, even one mile closer to Lake Michigan, and you're in a, uh, a more precarious spot like Sarah Rook Rug Roosh over there in Allendale. That's not much further west than where I am. It's northwest, but barely. You get a ton more snow there, at least they did this time, than I did, like four or five inches more. We got 16 inches where at my house as of uh, this morning. A ton. Oh, my God. It was a pain in the ass removing all that. Thank. Well, I don't know where I'd be if I didn't have a snowblower. My God. This has affected uh, Madison because she is. she went to see the boyfriend in, uh, near Indianapolis. She's got to get back home. The problem is where she's traveling, where she would travel, is this route, US 31, which goes right along Lake Michigan, which is still, especially in, in a, a community called South Haven, Michigan, is going to get like another one to two feet of snow today. Lake effect. You travel 10 miles in from there, nothing. Like an inch. It's remarkable. It's quite a phenomenon. That's what nails Buffalo every year is lake effect, even more so than uh, than here. So I'm like, okay, darling, you have to avoid the lakeshore. So you're going to take uh, whatever road it is out of Indianapolis towards South Bend. Make a right on uh, US 20, and then you're going to make a left on State Road, whatever, to take you to 131. And she's going to be like, huh? Like, well, just, you know, hit the alternate route button on the thing. Follow the blue line. You'll be fine. I was, I'm worried to death. And I go, and you can't travel anymore in the winter. This is a bad deal. All right. Uh, today, sporting the uh, religious institutions. You got the Catholic College, Aquinas College, probably still reeling from the Pope saying, uh, you're selfish if you adopt pets and not kids. I had a conversation about that with my wife yesterday. I go, so what do you think about this? And uh, she did not like that at all. She was not on the same page as uh, the Holy Father. And nor am I. I'm like, well, that I, I, again, I go back to whoever says, hey, honey, uh, we can't have children. I was thinking about, uh, you know, um, maybe we should adopt a child. No, let's adopt a dog. I mean, that that I doubt that that has ever happened. Apples and oranges, you know. Uh, typically, the people who try to have a child and can't because for whatever reason, medically. They can't wait to adopt a child if they can't have it biologically. The lady who's like, I want a baby, I want a baby, is not going to settle for a German shepherd. And then the Pope announcing that people who adopt dogs as opposed to babies are selfish. It's like, oh, no, oh, oh boy. You stepped in it there. This is not going to go over well. I will remember you. Uh, so, yeah, Aquinas College for the hoodie. And then Hope College. Uh, is, it, is it there? Yeah, it is. Hope College for the, for the hat that Madison uh, got me. This is uh, so you have Catholic College. And then they describe this as Christian College. And if you live around here, this type of dynamic has happened. Hey, so uh, do you go to church? Yeah, I do. Oh, yeah, where do you go? I go to Holy Redeemer Catholic Church. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm a Christian. Well, so am I. No, you're a Catholic. Dipshit. 
We were the first Christians. We're under the, we're on the same team. We play for the same coach, but you're, you know, running the uh, run and shoot offense. And I'm, you know, uh, 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 three yards in a cloud of dust over here. Same coach. It's like, you know, Jesus is Vince Lombardi and we're playing football here. It's all good. Yeah, but we're Christian. I am too, fuckhead. I don't know if you can say I'm a Christian fuckhead. Has that sentence ever been said before? I'm a Christian fuckhead. Well, anyway, uh, I noticed that I'm I'm uh, sporting gear from all these Christian colleges. And uh, a story popped into my brain that um, where Madison goes at Hope, you know, she wants to join a sorority. And so this does not jive with any other members of the Eric Zancho podcast family. And uh, Jacqueline in particular has a strong influence over her sister. Even though she's five years older, she goes, why do you want to do that? Why do you want to pay for your friends? And she goes, no, it's not like that here. This is a Christian college. This is, this is different. And I go, I, I don't know. I don't, you know, that's, that's always the story you, the story you hear about the uh, uh, opening up on the Today Show. Christian college. And then there's a drunken gang rape or something like that happens. Uh, I'm, I'm not, I, I, I hate the idea of this. But you do what you want to do. She goes, no, 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 it's fine. Okay. And so then um, I came, I started to think, you know, maybe, maybe this isn't such a big deal. Maybe I am overthinking it uh, because there was like a big deal in the dorms where Madison lives. A student, this is a huge deal, um, had to face like the disciplinary board at Hope College. And you get three strikes. Three strikes and you're out. Now, you go to any other... In- like, if you go to Matt Jackie's school, three strikes and you're out. What does three strikes mean? It means like three rapes. If you get three rapes, then you're kicked out. Uh, but at Hope, if you are found to have consumed alcohol or thought to be drunk or found with any alcohol, regardless of age, on the campus. You face the board and you get us. They like sit there and, you know, like a Senate subcommittee hearing around you and they all, no, they chastise you and they give you a demerit. This is college. You get three demerits. You're out for having been drunk or in possession of alcohol. So I'm like, all right, I can live with that. I'm okay with that. They've got a reputation to uphold there. So uh, Madison is, uh, that's, that's where she goes to school. This is a big deal. You get busted with that shit, you're in trouble. Meanwhile, I lost all of my coveted Pooh Bear points yesterday. Huge fight between the Queen of the Forest and your old pal Eric Zane. And to me, this is all based on communication or lack thereof. And what it boils down to is, I told you, you don't listen. These are the words of her. We pick up the car from Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. Driving back. The plan was travel her and I in Irvine's car that they let you use when they're fixing yours. Drop it off. Pay them. Get our car. Drive back. Stop at Costco. Okay. And uh, I'm telling you. Everything that she said, every, every point in the story, uh, which she says she, she told me, uh, she, she did not. And I still maintain that. And that was the, the basis for this fucking fight. 
First of all, it's snowing like hell yesterday. It was an absolute disaster. <clears throat> and taking our time getting there. And she goes, you know, you could drive faster. And I go, well, uh, first of all, you could drive if you want, if you don't like the way I'm driving. Uh, second of all, we just got a foot uh, and three inches of snow, and it's still snowing like crazy. Uh, there is, first of all, increased stopping distance needed. Second of all, this is not my car. And uh, I'm not going that, I already, I do drive slow typically, but if I drive at 45 in a 55, which I do regularly, shut up, I am now traveling at 35. So, all right, it's a 55 zone and I'm traveling 35 in a snowstorm. And you know what else? Everybody else is traveling that slow too. I am going with the flow of traffic in a car that is not mine. I would believe that uh, Megan and Jamie and Eric and even Bruce are thrilled with my choice to travel at a prudent speed. But yet, here we are half a mile into the trip, and she's busting my balls. And, uh, okay, all right, now at about 3.10 in the afternoon, she says, we got to go. I go, no problem. Um, now, I've got a hockey game. No, I don't. I've got a podcast with Ben at 7. It's 3.10 in the afternoon. I'm thinking all I have to do, go to Irvine's, trade cars, get our car back, drive to Costco, go home, have something to eat. Should be probably about 6.15 at this point. And you're taking uh, the time for travel, traveling slow, smart, because I'm a safe driver. Sometimes. And then uh, do the podcast with Ben. That's it. That's the plan. Couldn't have been more wrong. Get in that car. I'm already annoyed because she's telling me how to drive. Drive in out of Irvine's. And uh, she says, um, somehow, I forget exactly how because I got so pissed off. She announces that I have to take her to work at the YMCA. I go, what day? What? She goes, today. I work at 5. At this point, it's 4.15. And I'm way far. I'm in the middle of Grand Rapids. I go, you want to go to Costco? It's 4.15 right now. This was your plan. Drive to Irvine's. Pick pick up the car. Go to Costco. And then you expected me to... And for, I go, why do I have to drive you to work? And she goes, because it's snowy. I go, well, yes, it is. But the roads are fine. They're, they, they do a great job here at keeping them clear. And I go, hold on a minute here. Even if even if uh, you did tell me that you wanted me to drive you to work, which you did not, you didn't even tell me you had to work. I did too. I texted you that, I, that we had to be there at five. I go, show me. She goes back. There is no text that says I have to be at work at five. She sent me a text at 315 at the start of this uh, disaster that said, hurry, I have to work. And we have to go to Costco at 3.15. So at that point, she's thinking we're going to drive in the snowstorm, get the car, go to Costco, and then she's going to be at work. At no point did she tell me that I'm driving her to work. And at no point did she say she has to be at work at 5. Nothing. And so I never read that particular text. But anyway, I said to her, I go, well, show me where it says you have to be at work at five and show me where it says I'm driving you. No, I just told you that. I go, I don't think you did. No, you just don't listen. So this, oh boy, it got, she got so pissed off at me. And then you see what you do when you're in a fight with the queen of the forest is you allow the silent treatment to start. So now we've traveled another mile and a half. We now hate each other. She wishes she never married me at this point. She hates me. She says, oh, you've lost all of your Pooh Bear points. Now, that's serious shit. So what do I do? I actually start to physically tap her. Like, hello? Like, tap her on the head? Like, 
just completely just to antagonize her. The, the, the I am doing that just to get on her nerves. At this point, um, this is how it goes. We're going to fight now, and I'm actually going to I just tap her like on the shoulder. Hello. And it pisses her off so bad. So this is absolutely the goal. I am not going to leave this alone. I'm like, hello. I, I'm trying to upset her. And she takes her left hand and hits me. <laughs> she punches me as hard as she can. And she can punch so hard. It's fueled by red pubes. <laughs> Oh my God, in the back. She punched because I turned. She punches me as hard as she can in the back. And I just laugh. I go, <laughs> yes, yes. So I go, it's 4.15. Not only are we not going to be able to make it to Costco. First of all, I can't take you to work. I can't. I can't drop you up. She goes, I go, what, what were you thinking? She goes, yeah, I was thinking you picked me up at, uh, at eight. I go, I'm podcasting today. I told you I'm podcasting with Ben. I can't take you anywhere. And first of all, and second of all, why can't you drive? Well, the roads are just too bad. I go, they aren't. You just take it easy. You're fine. Okay. This isn't like Alaska. This isn't ice road truckers. Ding dong. I go, if we get home, and you jump in the driver's side here, and I run in the house. You might make it to work at 5. So she immediately starts texting her boss, do I have to come into work? And I'm like, well, don't do that. So I convince her that the roads are not bad. And I go, you need to write her back and say, cancel that. And so she's sitting there looking at the phone, and I go, what did she say? What did she say? She goes, shut up! She screams at me at the top of her lungs. I go, what? What? I just want to know what the hell is going on. You you sit there and complain that I don't listen to you, and then you don't tell me shit. She swears to God that, A, she told me she has to work. Well, actually, she did. She did text that she has to work. But she did that at 315. She said nothing about taking her to work. And the idea that she's expected to be able to get to Irvine's, get the car, come all the way back, go to Costco, and then buy all the shit you wanted to buy, wait with all those lunatics in line, and then you expect me to drive you into work? It, what, what the fuck? You got a time turner in Harry Potter? There's no way this is going to work. Oh, my God. Now, that is the biggest fight we've been in in a long time. Uh, eventually, by the time she got in the car and drove away to work as planned, and I sat down to do the podcast here, she was no longer mad at me, but I still do not have any Pooh Bear points. None. And if you saw the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast yesterday, you didn't hear it, but she walked in and she kind of just burst in the door. You may have noticed that. And she says, and I answered her with, no, I'm going to talk about that on Friday's podcast. Her question was, did you tell everyone how much of a cockhead you were? That's like her word, cockhead. Did you tell everyone, not dickhead, a cockhead. And I'm like, no, I didn't tell anybody about whatever you, you're saying. This is all based on communication. I still, she's like, you don't listen to me. You don't. I like, no, I do listen to you. I do listen to you. And I swear to God, you did not tell me anything about having to drive you to work. This is all bullshit. And the idea that we can make all that happen in the amount of time that you allotted for this is bullshit. Uh, all right. I think I might have screwed something up. <sighs> Let's see here. I was supposed to have a guest right now. Uh, 
I didn't set it up properly. So I'm going to re-invite. Give me a second. Because I really want this guest to be here. Uh, let's see. Okay. Sorry. Try this link. Trouble earlier. Meaning I'm rambling on. This should work. Okay. So that's what took uh, precedent yesterday. Lost all the Pooh Bear points. That is not good. Uh, so I got to earn that back. Sarah Rukruk Roosh says, I'll take her to Costco. You know, why don't you just stay in your world and I'll stay in mine? Just because, just because, I know that's very sweet of you, but just because all of this is happening doesn't mean because of what's said on the podcast that you can just jump into my life. Okay. Question, did Zane stop doing limo work? I haven't heard him talk about it in a long time. No, I am still doing limo work. I haven't done a run in a long time, but I am still doing limo work. Stevie says she is offering to help Eric. Uh, Stevie, it's okay. Um, I want, you know, I saw all the women are talking, trying to get involved in this. What is it with the women in my life trying to pick fights? If you are a female and listening to this show, here's your instructions for the rest of the show. Shut up! Amanda says, what did I do? You have a vagina. You have a vagina. That's the problem. I'm totally kidding. Uh, all right. The open of this show brought to you by me, my Patreon. Follow the show on Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com slash Eric Zane, E-R-I-C-Z-A-N-E, patreon.com slash Eric Zane. Uh, 15 plus hours of content available on there. So much fun, including the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast last night. Saul made the Thursday show. Friday is a bit of a struggle for Saul. Saul, Blind Saul, made the Thursday show, okay? And he um, was the joke judge, and he did an amazing job. We had a dynamic where Andrea and her mother, Marsha, were on there too, and my God, it really stole the show. You're going to love the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast that was recorded yesterday. You can already get at the uh, live uh, live stream replay if you are a $10 member on Patreon. Uh, I will post the audio podcast of that a little bit later on today. Meanwhile, tax season is here. I have a, the show accountant ready to go. The Gins, the tax hobbit is back. Tag accounting. Doesn't matter where you are in the United States. Tag accounting is who you need to call. Don't do your taxes alone. Don't do it with TurboTax. Don't do it with H&R Block. Do it with sponsor of the Eric Zane Show podcast, Tag Accounting. No matter where you are in the United States, you can file a return with Tag Accounting, and you don't have to leave the uh, friendly confines of your home. You will, uh, you will upload important documents via the uh, web-based portal, but it's important that you get on Troy's radar. Send him an email, Troy, at tagaccounting.com. 
Call or text 616. I should say call, don't text. 616-301-9516. 616-301-9516. Or online at tagcpa.net. I've got a number of Zaniacs in the past uh, two years that have banged on the door of the Gins, the tax hobbit, Troy Ginzer at Tag Accounting. And um, they will be back in the fold again, and they couldn't be happier. So join the army of Zane Show podcast listeners getting their taxes done by the tax hobbit. Thank you so much to Troy. Bosco's Pub. Um, we will be meeting again very soon at Bosco's Pub. Dean, do we have a date? Do we have a uh, a meeting date and time? It should be a 6 p.m. start at Bosco's Pub in Hudsonville, Michigan. I will get together with Zaniacs. We will eat. You will drink. We will have a good time. Some wise ass will put a stupid uh, magnet on the back of my truck. We will have a great deal of fun at Bosco's Pub. You will love the burgers. You will love the food. You will love the stiff drinks at Bosco's Pub. Wednesday through Saturday, they open at 11.30 a.m. on into the night. Otherwise, open for dinner on every other day. Closed on Sundays at Bosco's Pub. Located in Terra Square, if you're familiar with that area, in Hudsonville, Michigan, along Chicago Drive. Blue Frost IT is the managed IT service provider of the Eric Zane Show podcast. Um... You can uh, call or text 616-200-8550 for Blue Frost IT. Uh, For managed work, project work, you name it at Blue Frost IT for your small or medium-sized business. A lot of times, a small or medium-sized business, uh, they're they're, they're doing great. They're making money. They're uh, moving their product, moving their services. Everything is fantastic. But if you have a tech problem, you are starting from scratch to get that repaired. And that could take you a little bit of time. If you are already in the uh, in the queue or in the fold of part of the subscription-based service for Blue Frost IT for managed work, you basically have your own IT department. Call or text 616-285-50. This is absolutely mandatory if you have a small or medium-sized business. Thank you so much to Blue Frost IT. All right. So at 8.30... I was supposed to have retired Ron on the show. And I think I can still get him on. But I rambled on about that f- ridiculous fight with Diana that I was right about. I, I can't even get behind that. That we ha- that we got in because of miscommunication. I can't take full blame for this. No, I probably should. I know better. I've been with Diana for 33 years as of tomorrow which is true. Um, I, should, I should break down that story in a second. I've done it before, but it's great. 33 years tomorrow. Can you believe that? Um, reached out to Ron, retired Ron, who we started raiding this week on Twitch. 65-year-old retiree plays Madden online, and a number of you have fallen in love with. He's in Texas. And uh, I said, hey, man, let's surprise the audience. I'll introduce you to the rest of the audience face-to-face on Twitch. Okay, man, that sounds good. And uh, it was all through email communication. So I sent the guy a uh, link to get on here, and then I didn't have it prepped, and I noticed at 831 that, oh, boy, he's probably already clicked the link, so I generated a new link, and I sent it to him, so there's still a chance that he can join us. I just don't, just don't see it. I sent him another one saying, sorry, I missed you. Sending you a new link. So, Ron, I apologize if you're catching what I'm doing right now on Twitch. Um, Click on the link I sent you. And then I will know you're there. And then we can chat. And I'm here for another hour and 15 minutes or so. So anytime, if you see that link, click on that thing and we'll get you in here. Okay. I want to make sure I sent him something. 
Sorry, try this link. Trouble or earlier. This should work. Damn it. Kicking myself because I really wanted to talk to Ron. And you're like, oh, way to go, idiot. All right. Uh, Patriot Nick says, I can't wait to break bread with y'all sometime in July, I'm hoping. Y'all? Since when do you write y'all? Clay the Posty says, how do I use my Amazon account to subscribe? Very simple. First of all, I think Patriot Nick just gave you a gift, so you're good. But what you do is when you go to twitch.tv slash Eric Zane live, if you root around there, there's a big red button that says subscribe with your Amazon Prime account. In fact, let me take a look at it. There's a wormhole I could put myself on. Yeah, I don't know how you could possibly miss that. See that where it says Twitch Prime, subscribe for free. Just click that thing. And then it'll take you somewhere. You know? No problem. Yeah, Nick is planning on coming in July. I think Kate is planning on uh, being here too sometime in the summer. Should be awesome. Beach Squid writes, You lost your Pooh Bear points before your anniversary? Okay, it's not our wedding anniversary. That is July 18th, uh, 1992, that we got married. So that'll be 30 years this year that we've been married. But January 8th, 1989. Billboard charts January 8th. 1989. Let's see. So I was probably listening to this. My prerogative. Uh, 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 uh. Look at the haircut. I was probably walking around Sweeney Hall uh, with my acid watch wash pants on, rolled up, Adidas high tops, with a haircut like Bobby Brown here. I might have been singing Two Hearts by Phil Collins or Every Rose Has Its Thorn by Poison. Armageddon It by Def Leppard. Smooth Criminal by Michael Jackson. I walked by the desk at Sweeney Hall. Bright red hair. Giant oversized sweatshirt on that said Coca-Cola across the boobies. Knit pants with stirrups. Pooh Bear at the desk of Sweeney Hall. My heart broken because Julie Gerace broke up with me. Oh, my God. I was such a stiff. If any woman let me touch her boobies, I was going to marry her. I was that guy. You let me touch your boobies? Well, I'm your husband. Walked out of there after Julie Gerace broke up with me. Wandered by the desk. There she is. This little teeny tiny thing. Hi, Eric. Hi, Diana. Um, she actually had a little, this is, uh, she used to always tell me to shut up. She said, shut up, Eric. She would always do that. Shut up, Eric. She, that was her way of flirting. Diana's way of flirting was shut up, Eric. And she, she'd tell you that. I go, Hey, how are you? She goes, what's the matter? I go, ah, uh, Julie just broke up with me. She goes, didn't you guys just start dating? I go, yeah, something bad happened. So, uh, we're not dating anymore. And, uh. <sighs> Pellerito says Julie is incredibly hot. Okay, we gotta we gotta do it. We gotta do this. 
Hold on a second here. I probably shouldn't have used your last name. No one hunt her down because I'll get in trouble. I'll probably get sued. She's married now. I still love you. I wanted you to be my wife. She's in love with that sweet man. Give her a break. Come on now. That... She was going to be my wife. I still miss you. <clears throat> no, no. Come on. She's, she's changed a little over the years. Uh, so I was all bummed out at the time. Uh, Diana said, she's into black guys. No, she didn't say that. Um, so I go, well, did you have a good vacation? Yeah. And then I somehow, I, I don't know how I asked it. I go, I go, did you do anything fun with your boyfriend? That's what it was. She was dating some guy uh, who was a Marine. And while she was home from vacation... Christmas vacation, he asked her to marry her or he did something. I'm not even sure what went down. And so uh, she, she shut him down and said, nah. And then, but I didn't know that. And I go, did you do anything fun with your boyfriend? She said, what boyfriend? And I was like, uh-oh, she doesn't have a boyfriend. So then I wandered up. I went back into Sweeney Hall. To Martha's room. And I've told you about Martha. It's in your pawsy. She's a woman who had a stinky vagina. But she ended up being a great friend uh, afterwards. And so it, it was never the same after I touched her vagina. Because for like three days, I'm like, God. I, no matter how much I wash this hand, it won't stop smelling like her privates. I mean, what's going on there? I mean, even just water and a rag uh, would, would, would work. But no. Oh, I just realized something. Okay, hang on a second. I'll get back to the story in a second. I'm screwing this whole thing up with uh, retired Ron. Anyway, um, so this all goes on, and uh, I'm like, oh, my God, I can't get this smell out of my hand. And so uh, no matter how much I wash that hand, and then Skipper says, it's in your paws, E. It's in your paws. Never forget that. So then I go back to Martha's room, and uh, uh, Paula, Martha, Stinky Martha, Paula, and Julie Love, they go, I go, hey, I think that that uh, Diana, I think I, I think she likes me. She's flirting with me. They said, no, she's got a boyfriend. I go, no, she doesn't. No, she doesn't. So then the next thing you know, Diana's getting a little bit more flirty. The rest is history. One month later, she was letting me touch her private area. And... I was so scared about odor. I was horrified. I was like, do all of you women smell like this? Do all of you redheads smell? Because Martha was a redhead too. Do all of you Martha's or a redhead smell like this? My God. She did not. Thank God. Oh, it's in your paws. Hmm. Um. Nick says, stinky vag probably gave birth to a whole school of sea bass. Kyle says, is anyone else having issues with sound? Keeps going quiet. 
then loud. Yeah, I think that's on my end. I don't think that's your fault. All right. I think I managed to figure this out. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, he's the pride of the great state of Texas. I want to introduce you right now. The one and only retired Ron. Ron, how are you, buddy? Hey, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Ron, I am. Uh, I think I might have an echo. Yeah, that's okay. Maybe it doesn't sound bad on my end. At least I don't think so. Maybe it's one of your other sources. Um, okay. Okay. How are you, Ron? Welcome to the show. Man, I am blessed, Eric. Thank you so much. It is a pleasure and an honor to be here this morning with you guys. Ron, you uh, won the hearts of the audience. Uh, it was just a chance encounter. The uh, You're familiar with the raid function on Twitch. And when I get done with my show, I usually just fire people off to someone in hopes that someone will... Uh, 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 you know, like it or say something nice. And that, that worked to a T when we encountered clearly one of the sweetest people on the planet. So this is fantastic. You got all these new friends just as you start your retirement. Yeah, I've been having a blast too, Eric. Thank you so much for that raid, man. This has been the most fantastic week of my life to start <laughs> my retirement. I kid you not. Man, it's been so much fun with these guys. Whoa, I tell you. Uh Ron, you're in you're in Texas, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Dallas. Well, a suburb, uh, Lancaster, Texas. Of course, of course. And uh you've uh, made your life there. Originally from Michigan, though. I guess you were born in Saginaw, Michigan. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. I was born in Saginaw. Shortly after, my parents uh, took me and we moved to New York. And then I went back when I was nine to Saginaw. And that's where I graduated from Saginaw High School. And I met a lot of people, too, from uh, Saginaw. That was, that's a small world, I tell you. Yeah, that's crazy that, uh, you know, I, I spent time in the area, worked actually in Saginaw proper, uh, we probably, do, do you remember the Wendler arena? Do you remember that place where you'd go see concerts? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Before the Saginaw civic center. Correct. Well, that, I think that eventually became the set. Yes. That it was known as that before the Saginaw civic center. So then off you go, you make your way, you have a whole career, uh, working and, uh, and then now you've retired, uh, after a, a long career of working. So congratulations for that, Rod. Hey, thank you, Eric. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, tell us more about yourself. What did you do? What was your lot in life, Ron? Ah, wow. It has been real, real interesting, man, for real. <laughs> 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 I tell you, I... Uh, as soon as I graduated... I spent a little bit of time. I was kind of, you know, really, really foolish in my young days. Yeah, haven't we all been, Ron? No big deal. Uh, spent, 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 spent a little time behind the walls and got out and still really didn't learn my lesson. God just blessed me that didn't ever go back. I did some crazy stuff that I should have, but. Hey, hey, man, you know, I think. Uh, I, I didn't. I wouldn't, uh, I, I, I wouldn't feel bad about that. I know you probably feel a little sheepish saying that, but you, uh, coming out and just getting out in front of that is fantastic. We, uh, we all have things that have happened in the past, but the fact of the matter is you're right here now on, on the good side of things. And we couldn't be happier about that. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. That, well, you know, the bad stuff in your life kind of, it gives you, it gives you a much better outlook and it and it made me the person that I am today, you know. 
I like to share, especially like I said, I love my young folks. Well, there's a lot of they are our future. Yeah. And the leaders. Sorry about that. That's all right. Go ahead. Uh, no, you, you, I, I know where you were going to, what road you were going to go, go down. You make a great point. Uh, and that's, I, how did you, uh, stumble into the world of Madden football, Rod? Okay. That's the easy one. My two oldest sons. Okay. Uh, me and my wife, we got six sons earlier, uh, uh, in their, in their life, we had, you know, Nintendo and, there was a game, uh, Tecmo Bowl. They loved, we, well, we all love playing Tecmo Bowl. So a few years ago, my two oldest son came to me and turned me on to Madden because, of, like I said, they remembered us playing Tecmo Bowl. It was a good way for us to, to bond together and everything. Yeah. And so, and so, what ended up happening, we played for a while. I think they just turned me on because they wanted to beat me up, beat, beat, beat up on me in the game. <laughs> but see, I became, I became better because I'm a real competitor and I, I, I started beating them more consistently and they quit playing me. Oh! <laughs> okay. All right. So, so, that- so I had to find a different uh, avenue so I went online and started playing people. I see. And then I found Twitch and people watching people play so I could pick up hints and tips on how to get better. Okay. Now, uh, and Ron, yeah. That, then I uh-huh. started thinking about streaming. Have you ever uh, rage quit, Ron? Have you ever had, have you ever done that? Gotten so frustrated you uh, rage quit? No, I don't think so, Eric. I get, I get a little frustrated, but. I'm a pretty laid back dude now, man. I think a lot of stuff just rolls off my, my, my shoulder, man. Most of the time. I like it. I like it. All right. And so then you started streaming. How long have you been streaming on Twitch? Was that, was this week the first week? No, sir. I've been streaming, uh, since September. Last, no, September before last. Okay, okay. So uh, just started doing that. And that's, uh, you know, what I love about that is, uh, you know, a lot of people might be like, well, Twitch, isn't that uh, like for kids and stuff like that? But no, it's a, it's a perfect way to get uh, whatever it is you want to uh, engage people with out there. And uh, I, I love the fact that uh, you being retired, do just that, you know, take advantage of Twitch. Absolutely, absolutely. I pin myself as the best 65-year-old Madden player on the planet. <laughs> Have you ever taken anybody on who was who was like your age or older, Ron? Uh the oldest person that I that I know that I've, I've played was we're friends now, as a matter of fact. Uh uh, he, a matter of fact, he, he was, uh, he's streaming right now and I watch him. Yeah. But his name is Packers L X V. Uh, huh. he's from, uh, he's from green Bay, Wisconsin. And we play a couple of times. I think we played twice and we split. Okay. Okay. So you got like the senior bowl going on with that one. Yeah. You can call it the geriatric bowl. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so no. Um, we had a uh, situation this week, Ron, uh, because everybody, you kind of became the darling of the show quickly after this all unfolded. And then um, uh, later on in the week, uh, somebody sent me a email that said, hey, you might want to reach out to Ron. His camera is on and he's not aware. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so I, I think you had uh, you, you, uh, yeah, your, uh, yeah. your, your better half was like, are you streaming? And you're like, no, no, I'm not on right now. And everyone's like, no, he is. So they were afraid you were going to start like pounding your putt on the camera or something. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I showed her that little uh, segment yesterday where I thought I'd hit the stop streaming, but you know, the uh, start recording button is right up under there. Yep, yep. And that's what I actually did. But yeah, uh, I'm, I'm so glad that, like I said, I didn't get naked or nothing. And, you know, and, <laughs> you know, and we, me, we and her do have a habit of bickering again with each other. Oh, yeah. But, but that's my queen and I love her. Oh, yeah. Death. That's do anything for her. We've been together like for 46 years. Oh, that's fantastic. I was just talking about the amount of time that I've been with my wife. Off I've... and on, off and on. Okay. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Um, now you have six kids. So would you say that your pullout game is weak? Uh, yeah, I was, I, I was pretty horny, man. I was in my younger days. I'm still kind of a horny dude, man, to be honest with you. I run around as a house boy. That's, that's why I'm glad y'all didn't catch us because I run around the house talking about, Hey girl, come here. Let me smack that thing. <laughs> That is fantastic. That is great. Okay, well, you got to stay happy, you know? I mean, obviously, your better half. Uh, what What is the sweet lady's first name? Carrie. Carrie. Okay, so Carrie's like, oh, no. Oh, no. He's got he's got that look in his eye. He's uh, Here he comes. She's like, oh, no. She's got a – you're probably chasing her all around the house, aren't you, Rod? Uh, not right now, man. Okay. Right now. She uh, she just had surgery last week to have a uh, defibrillator put in. Oh, okay. Well, I hope that everything stay. Uh, that's what, that's yeah. what we were doing yesterday. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Excellent. Um, I was helping her get dressed. Gotcha. Okay. She she needed some assistance. Well, I'm glad that you are there. Any other plans in your retirement, Ron? Things you want to do for fun uh, now that you've got all this time on your hands. Well, I, I just talked to some of uh, my, my my peoples at home in Saginaw. I have a 90, I think she 97-year-old aunt that I haven't been home in such a long time. I want to get home and visit her, uh, you know, because God forbid I don't want to have to go, you know, when, when she's been called home to glory. I want to see her before then. That's a, that sounds like a plan, Ron. That's a, that's a, a, a sweet thing, man. Uh, a- absolutely. Uh, my gosh, 97 year old aunt. So that is uh, definitely a good plan to have. It sounds like you're all about family, Ron. You know, you sound like our, you sound like our kind of guy. Hey, most definitely, most definitely family first, Eric, always. I, 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 I preach that in my, uh, you know, in my streams, when, when I'm talking to people that I, I tell them family first. Well, yeah. That, and that's, that's, uh, that's the way you do it. And uh, I've got several of the audience members, a, a good portion of my audience is in the great state of Michigan. If you give us a heads up, we can rendezvous and we'll all head over to the uh, freaking sizzler or something in Saginaw, you know? Hey, man, that sounds great. I'll, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Sure enough, really. Oh, we, business. oh we would love that. We, the, this whole group does that sort of thing all the time. It's a great group of people. The The story of me is uh, it goes way back to I had mentioned I used to be on the radio. So uh, that kind of uh, transitioned over to Twitch here. These people love doing those those type of fun things. So, Ron, uh, uh, as I continue here, uh, you've got you obviously know a little bit about football. Are you following this weekend's activity, the final week of the NFL season? You know, believe it or not, uh, Eric, I, I'm I'm a fan of the Pittsburgh Steelers, but I don't follow football really that deeply. <laughs> you know, I can take it or leave it as far as uh, okay. watching it and stuff like that. Yeah. I, no, I just play Madden because I don't know. It just it's just fun. I got into it's just fun. Yeah, I, I just assumed you were like some savant with football, but that totally I I can totally see that people do do that. They just love playing the game. So that is uh, that is awesome. Well, so are you going live today on Twitch, Ron? Uh, yes, I'll probably be going live a little bit later there, Eric. Uh, for a while, I uh, got some uh. 
errands to run. But, yeah, I, I, I've been enjoying myself so much this week. I, I normally I normally only used to go out on every now and then. Yeah. But now this week I've been, man, I've had such a great time, man. It's been, man, man I love your people. Hey, I just want y'all to know. I love y'all, man, for real. Thank y'all for coming and hanging out with me. Uh, I just put your handle up uh, in the comments if people want to check you out and follow your page. I uh, I, I encourage that, and then uh, you can have even more fun. So, uh, Ron, I want to keep in touch with you, okay, buddy? You got my email. Uh, and, and my God, uh, there's uh, the, the, the future is very bright for us as friends, Ron. Yes, sir. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. I appreciate the the invite to come on the show, man. I've been loving your show, man, since I've been watching it. You know, the first day I'm like, hey, man, you know, that Ben situation was a little touchy, but I'm like, that's why I don't jump to to judgment too quickly. You understand me? Because yeah. I, I, I love people. Oh, I understand that. I understand that. You see, the the the, the nature of the beast in doing what I do it's I, I I try to pride myself on uh, no one is going to have any trouble figuring out where I stand on an issue. So if, if, if I pull something out of somebody, whether it's anger or happiness or disbelief, that's the goal. So that's that's kind of that's kind of the way it goes. Uh, some people want to call you Rowdy Ron instead of retired Ron. Rowdy Ron works, too. Ha-ha. Ha-ha, that's fine. That's fine. All right, Ron. Well, if I see you on, uh, hey, I yeah. I don't know if they told you, but uh, I'm a pastor, you know. Oh, no, I didn't know that. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you're at, at your local church? Yeah, kind, kind of different, though. Yeah. Are you the, Are you like the pastor who, like, handles snakes and stuff I, like that? Oh, no, no, no. Not that deep. But I'm, I'm a little over the edge, though. My bishop think I'm kind of, like, a little, a little off a little bit, but... Okay. All right. Well, hey, Ron, whatever it takes, you know, uh, it, I'm, I'm sure you, that you're great at that, Ron. Yeah, I love people. So that's, the, you know, it's a good thing. I love, I didn't know that's the, that's the, that's the basic thing, Eric, is that you love people. That's the thing. Ron, at your church, are people going to rush up to and the I altar? I dad the other day on the show too. Oh yeah. Yeah. My dad is, uh, my dad is, uh, is one of a kind, 87 years old. So, you know, he's, he's old enough to be your father, my dad. Yeah. I could tell by the, uh, by, by the wisdom that he, that he was speaking. That's right. Sure. Right. Hey, uh, about your church, Ron, um, I, is this the type of church where people run to the front and you put your hand on them and they fall over and you've healed them? Oh, no, no, Eric. No, no, not that deep. We just, it was just a little, uh, it's a little church and, 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 uh, called, uh, uh, Crossroads Fellowship uh, Outreach. We do a homeless uh, outreach, okay, and good. we have uh, service right now on Facebook on Sundays. Awesome uh, w- fellowship! Can you say because it again, of the please? Pandemic, of course. Yeah, yeah. What 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 is the name of the church again, Ron? Crossroad Fellowships Outreach. Crossroads Fellowship Outreach. Okay, I'm putting it on there. There you go. Yeah, you can catch us on Facebook Live. As a matter of fact, I'm going to preach uh, Sunday. Okay, Preaching Sunday, Crossroads Fellowship Outreach, Pastor Rowdy Ron. I think that's going to stick. <laughs> I love that. I love that one. I love that one. I kid you not. I love that one, boy, y'all. Ron, we love you, and I want to wish you a great rest of your day. We are so lucky to have you here. Okay, buddy? Thank you so much, Eric. And you know what I'm going to say, everybody? You know what I'm going to say? Peace? Oh, that's that's perfect, Ron. Love? Yes. And so. <laughs> peace. Love, love, everybody. And so, and black power. All right, Ron, love you. Okay. <laughs> okay. See you. Right, love you guys. See you, buddy. There you Bye. go. Past, Pastor Rowdy Ron.
Uh, first, uh, wow, uh, it was uh, some uh, hijinks getting him on there, and I apologize for that. But Ron is uh, one of the new favorites here. I mean, seriously, how great was that? Adam says black power. He put up the black power fist. He said, peace, love, and soul and black power. That's what that is. Uh, yeah, absolute. Now that is a spirit. That is something like when we worked on the radio, you would always try to find the right person who had it, you know? That type of character that just runs so deep, you know, I could only uh, hope and pray for that amount of character. I have never been able to achieve it, but occasionally you'll find someone who has that. Okay. There was a a guy that I found on this podcast up in uh, Northeast Michigan that I called the voice of America. I ripped off the old Delbert uh, Harris thing or something like that. And uh, he he was going, he was doing okay. And then he got like racist and started to say terrible things about gay people. So I had to fire his ass. And then there was the other guy who was way the other way. He was way too liberal. He was a black guy. I forgot his name. He was a great character too, but he got, it got to be too tedious and too fucky. But I think Ron is the type of soul that he's so damn sweet, you know? He's remarkably sweet, and I think that makes him... There isn't a a, a bitter bone in his body. Why is it? That's... You know, it's like with Throat Slash Dale. Some of the most amazing people on the planet have been incarcerated. Dale is, oh my God, his spirit is un, is out of control. And so is freaking uh, Pastor Rowdy Ron. Wonderful, wonderful human. I'm so happy to have met him. Uh, Chat, I ain't finding that church. What town outside of Dallas did he say he lived in? Begins with an L. That's what I remember. There you go. I'll find it for you. I'll get it from Ron. And then uh, there you go. Is it Lancaster? Yeah, it was Lancaster. There, there he is right there. He says it's Lancaster. It's Lancaster, Eric. I love you. Peace. Love. Soul. That's your, that's your slug line to end every time we talk, Ron. Peace. Love. Soul. Black power. Prison has a great way of giving you an attitude of gratitude. Uh, our very own Crank, Jason, who uh, has worked with the prison population, especially when you're not in prison. Oh, man. Yeah, you are scoring major points here, Pastor Rowdy Ron. Yes, that is a winner. So happy. So Happy. All right. Let me get to this. Uh, Antonio Brown overload. It seems like the stories just kind of pile in when it comes to Antonio Brown. Yesterday, I had enough material when the story came out that Antonio Brown released uh, text message exchanges with head coach Bruce Arians. That alone would have been enough for me to talk about on this show. But there has been uh, no less than two other ridiculous stories that trump that one. But I'm going to talk about them in the order that they happen to be unloaded. Uh, the, of course I read the statement that Antonio Brown said, yeah, man, I was hurt. I couldn't play. I've got uh, bone fragments and, and really and my ankle is messed up. I need surgery right away. And, uh, okay. All right. Uh, when asked about the injury, 
Bucks head coach Bruce Arians said he did not know Brown was hurt. I didn't know he was injured, uh, Arians said via USA Today Sports. It was obvious what it was pretty obvious what happened. He left the field and that was it. We had a conversation and he left the field. On Thursday morning, Antonio Brown used Twitter and Instagram stories to post what he claimed. Uh, well, they were. There were text messages between him and Arians before Sunday's game, which would indicate that the coach did know about the injury. I'm going to look at them right now. Uh, this is Bruce Arians. Make sure you are ready to go tomorrow. We are not resting for the playoffs. Call me. Antonio writes, I'm all in coach. And it's a picture of him getting some type of treatment. I'm all in coach. I really can't get to full speed. I want to win. Want to be there if I wake up tomorrow. If I wake up tomorrow and feel better, I'll be ready. Kind of rolled it outside on a two on two point play. I want what's best for the team. Let me know. When you, when you free, I'll call you. Arian says, come see me in the morning. We'll talk it out. Definitely want you with us in case you are ready. Okay. Bucks beat reporters, however, noted that everyone around the team knew Brown was injured ahead of the game. The issue, they say, is what Arians knew when the receiver walked off the sideline. Again, this changes everything. Brown tweeted on Instagram, remember, coach said we never talked. They did talk. So Arians is a liar. He lied about it. He said publicly he didn't know if Brown was injured, but said that in the context of the game. In that moment, everyone around the team knew Brown had been sidelined by an ankle injury, even missing practice that week. Oh, this looks terrible. The only reason why Arians isn't in trouble is because Brown's a, uh, Antonio Brown is a major dickhead. Rick Stroud, a beat reporter, wrote, of course, Arians knew Brown was injured. He hadn't practiced since Wednesday. The dispute came on the sideline during the game after Brown had played the first half. Bruce Arians said they never, ever talked. So that's a lie. Here's the long and the short of it. Bruce Arians, asshole. Antonio Brown, asshole. Antonio Brown, bigger asshole than Bruce Arians. Antonio Brown looks like asshole because Bruce Arians is asshole. No one thinks Bruce Arians is asshole because Antonio Brown looked like a bigger asshole. But make no mistake, Brown was right to do what he did because they cut him on the field. That was it. And I am not pro Antonio Brown. I have always, always bashed this asshole. But in this case, he is an asshole who did nothing wrong. Okay? Wow. Like I said, if this was the only story about Antonio Brown, that would be enough. But it's not. It's not. Oh, my God. It's the uh, frequency that the day on, uh, that these stories popped up. Before that football game that he ended up walking away from, he wanted to have sex in the New York, New Jersey area with a uh, OnlyFans star, which is porn. Okay, right? Isn't that what it is? It's like you base it's Patreon with boobies. And he had struck up sometime earlier, a long time ago, a... Uh, text message uh, relationship with uh, OnlyFans model Ava Louise. 23-year-old young lady who probably makes a sizable income. She looks to be quite sultry. You know, uh, this is uh, the talented Ava right here. 
And uh, Antonio Brown is like, hey, I, you, hey, what do you say? Let's get together. And uh, that was the plan. Problem with that is he's not supposed to have anybody outside of the football team bubble into their circle to get because of COVID. By the way, she has since ratted him out. And I, the thing is, I don't think he did anything wrong. She's just playing dirty pool here he didn't all they did was had sex before the game the night before he broke a rule by having her in in the hotel which is a problem um but she just immediately turned on the guy she takes a covid test she claims and takes a picture of a positive covid test and text, sends it to the Bucks on like Instagram or uh, uh, tags them or whatever and says, get your team checked. <laughs> because she says she's got COVID. Not only that, um, she, you know, is talking about the uh, uh, sexual rendezvous that they had. Unbelievable. Ava spoke directly to the Daily Mail about uh, her and Antonio's Saturday night hotel room meetup, provided screenshots of some of the messages and described how it all started after he called her up on the phone telling her to go to the Westin Hotel in Jersey City where the Bucks were staying while while there. He kept saying, I got money for you. I got a bonus for you. And I was like, what are you saying? This is her talking. I just thought that was weird. She spilled to the Daily Mail. I'm guessing she got a sizable payout from the Daily Mail. I thought, okay, I'll just go see what this is about because it's Antonio Brown. It's the day before the Jets game. I'll go. Um, the screenshots, uh, all the text information is there. She's posted all the text. She snuck past security because the NFL has security there to keep this from happening. Uh, they were able to get by that. Ava then claims that Antonio went on a rant about the league and the pandemic where he went allegedly over her, uh, allegedly told her, fuck the NFL. He then reportedly told her he was in that, uh, told her that he was insane. And that quote, you don't even know my crazy right now. You don't know my crazy right now. He was upset because of what happened. This is the same lady, by the way, uh, this Ava, whatever her face is, who, she, if you remember, she would uh, go into restrooms and lick toilet seats. I'm not even kidding. It was, I remember this some time ago. She would go into uh, public restrooms and lick the toilet seats. That was her thing. And so I guess whatever it takes to become famous, maybe uh, Pastor Rowdy Ron and I should do that. And maybe we'll get more people paying attention to us on Twitch. Uh, The OnlyFans model shockingly added Antonio insisted that they film themselves having sex for her to post on her OnlyFans account. I don't, first of all, Antonio Brown, other than getting her into the room, which is a break of uh, league protocol, that's a, that's a problem right there. Probably get suspended for that. If he winds up back in the league Um, outside of that, this whole thing seems like she's just kissing and telling it's kind of gross. She says, when we had sex, he wanted to film it and make a tape on my phone. He wanted me to put it out there, she claims. I looked at him, and I'm like, are you being serious right now? And he was. Again, I'm like, you're Antonio Brown. Why would you want that scandal? Um, And then she, I'll link all this up. In fact, I'll give it to you right now for you to check out on your own if you want. And then I'll post it in the show notes of the audio podcast. But he wanted to create that. I think it was purposeful considering how he's been acting in the media. He wants that controversy. He wants this attached to his name. Ava reportedly had no intentions of exposing Brown. And then, (coughs) excuse me, she says, once she saw his behavior out on the field, she got worried about his mental health and condition. I had no intention of exposing Antonio Brown ever. But then I saw what happened and I thought, oh my God. I've seen the events leading up to this break breakdown. I'm involved. She said, I really couldn't understand half of what he said because he was mumbling. This man really did not seem okay. So that motivated you to make all of this public. That doesn't seem like that's helping in any way. What a filthy slut. Fucking a. 
I'm guessing she's not too worried about her image. Yeah, what the hell are you doing? You And so you think that you uh, uh, talking to whatever media outlet about this is going to help him? Get the fuck out of here. It doesn't end there, though. He had a beef with Tom Brady's trainer. That guy's name is Alex Guerrero. Alex Guerrero needed $100,000 to be like the trainer for Antonio Brown. Okay. Obviously, he has no use for that guy. Supposedly, this guy had offered up some treatment, but not obviously... uh, that's a prorated one hundred thousand dollars. You're going to get some of that money back. All right. Not sure what's going on here, but Brown tweeted uh, while this is going on with Bruce Arians. Imagine your quarterback trainer charging you a hundred thousand dollars, then doing no work. Must be was a part of these guys' plans all along. Uh, littered with grammatical errors, hashtag mission impossible. So he's floating the idea that um, Tom Brady's trainer, Alex Guerrero is also in on this and trying to steal money from him, which I, I don't think by the text exchange between Guerrero and Brown, that that is true because um, Guerrero, he responded. Um, Antonio Brown wrote, Hey, a G Alex Guerrero, uh, if we're not going to, to work anymore, that's fine. Let me know about the $100,000 I paid you. Only fair to get back half of my money. Let me know how to proceed. Guerrero says, good morning, AB. I appreciate you reaching out to me. I completely understand that you want to go in a different direction. Thank you for the opportunity to work together. You are a wonderful person. I hope for your continued success on and off the field. Please let me know where you want me to send the balance. Big hugs, my friend. So this guy's not trying to steal anything from him. Um, But for some reason, um, Brown tweeted that exchange out. And he he responded to Alex Guerrero how to get him the money. And then screenshot all of that and posted it to Instagram. And included in the screenshot is Antonio Brown's account number for his checking account and the routing number. He And then he for, uh, formulates some conspiracy that this guy's trying to, uh, is in cahoots with the team, even though the guy just said, well, of course I'm going to pay you back. So Brown says, all right, here's my account number, my routing number, uh, fabricates some drama, posts it to Instagram, included in this is his bank info. Oh, <laughs> no. Ah. Uh. So then everybody's like, what the fuck? And people are like, uh, I mean, that's out there now. I'm guessing that as soon as you make, you make it out there, it, he then deleted the tweet. But, it, 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 I mean, people have access to his cash at that point. My gosh. Whew. I think had he just, okay, walked off the field, made it clear Bruce Arians knows about what happened. And then someone take his devices away at that point. At that point, you've done you've done fine. Go ahead, let only fans, crazy bitch, say what she has to say. Doesn't matter who cares. Uh, man, unbelievable. Woo! Hard to believe this is all happening to poor, poor Antonio Brown, who make no mistake, he's an asshole too. But he should be playing football, you know, at some point after he heals up. Um, Real quick, I wanted to touch on this because um, it is uh, just such a ridiculous scenario and story. Um, I touched on it on the Patreon, but I wanted to talk about it in the regular podcast. Because we all need to give positive vibes to the Jacksonville Jaguars to beat the Indianapolis Colts this weekend in Jacksonville. 
Now, going into the game, the Colts have lost in Jacksonville because they play every year twice, I think. Yeah, twice. They're in the same division, I believe. Um, Jacksonville has beat the Colts the last six years, despite the Jags being pretty shitty. If that happens again, chaos could ensue. If the Colts win, they're in the playoffs. If they win, then the Chargers, the Los Angeles Chargers, and the Las Vegas Raiders play in the evening. Whoever wins that game goes to the playoffs. It's a win-and-you're-in scenario, last game of the season. However, if the Colts lose to the Jags, it is in the best interest of the Chargers and the Raiders in that later game to tie. If they tie, they both go to the playoffs. They are ensuring that they go to the playoffs. There is a possible scenario that they both will take a knee every play to end the game in a 0-0 zero, zero tie. And this is a, a prudent move. You are essentially playing one less game, entering the playoffs. You're in the playoffs, which is what you need to be in order to have a shot at the Super Bowl. Um, and, you know, there's uh, uh, less risk for injury because you're taking a knee the whole game. This, is, this would be the right thing to do the nfl's like no oh my god this makes me so happy i am hoping and praying i mean what else are they gonna do they would have to take a knee both teams this has never ever happened before this will have never been a thing keep your fingers crossed that the jaguars beat the freaking um, Indianapolis Colts. That would be so fun. All right. Okay. I've got um, something else I want to get to. It is uh, the story of the Uber driver stuck on the road on I-95, that unbelievable snowstorm. Okay. This is an incredible story. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, just as a reminder, Van Dyke Mortgage, 231-332-6505. The Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. No matter where you are in the listening audience, uh, with the exception of Alaska, South Carolina, Hawaii, and Maine, you can take advantage of this and get a mortgage from the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage, 231-332-6505. Thank you to Mario. Stand by. I'm having a terrible time. Dang it. Horizon Hydroponics. Next week, I'll be doing uh, Growers 101 with John from Horizon. You'll see it on Facebook. If you are growing indoors, make sure you bang on the door of horizon hydroponics and get some of their amazing products to help you with whatever it is you are trying to grow. H O R I Z E N hydroponics.com. They will ship those products anywhere in the U S for free. If your order is over $250 or more is over $250. Uh, and use the coupon code Zane Show at checkout to save you 10%. Thank you, Horizon Hydroponics. That's H O R I Z E N hydroponics.com. Frank the Tank Fuss My Policy Shop Insurance 616 914 4070 for your insurance needs. He What he does is he's a licensed independent insurance agent slash broker. He's an insurance nerd. He works tirelessly finding the best rates for his clients. Okay, and we're talking about any type of insurance. And you should do this every so often. Get an insurance checkup, okay? It shouldn't be you just get your insurance and then you never, like, even look at it. Occasionally, you should go over it with a fine-tooth comb to see if, you know, if you bundle this, can you save this? Can you get more for less? And there's always opportunities to do that. But the problem is 
who has the time to do that? The tank does, and he wants to, and he's twisted and thinks that this is fun. Uh, call or text him 616 914 4070. And, or, uh, and four, I'm sorry, 4070. And then, um, you know, say, hey, look, uh, Eric Zane sent me. Eventually, you'll get to the point where uh, you're telling him all of what you have already, and then he gets on the trail of that, finding uh, lower rates for you. This is all free, and it uh, it's all his time. And if he can find a lower rate for you, you will save money. And this doesn't cost you a dime. 616-914-4070. Thank you to Frank Fuss. All right. Story going around about that uh, I-95 wreck that had people in that unbelievable scenario for hours for the first part of this week. One of the people involved in this was an Uber driver who was stranded with a passenger for five hours on I-95 Um, during this snowstorm, and something good is happening here. Devontae Williams from D.C. was in the process of dropping off a teenage passenger on Tuesday when it happened. Now, again, he was only in there for like five hours. Some of those people were in there for more than 24 hours. The dude was determined to get the girl home to her parents. My passenger, she was so distraught. Just a kid. Apparently, I uh, he says, apparently I picked her up from Union Station and her train was canceled due to derailment. So she only could call for an Uber and I was the driver. Williams said he provided the young lady with water and crackers during the whole ordeal. While on the road, Williams said he also spoke to her parents to reassure them that he was going to take care of their daughter. He had to explain, hey, I'm not crazy. Yeah, if I'm the parents, I'm like, oh, great. This is uh, this is going to be a bad scene. I mean, I would be just freaked out. I mean, come on. Some weirdo Uber driver. No offense, Jason Terry. He's, expl- he's talking to him. He's, I'm just trying to get your daughter uh, home safe. Uh, they finally got away from the highway. And then Williams gets on the phone and says, yeah, we can't travel. I'm renting your daughter a hotel room. And then I'm like, fuck that. There's no way. She is going to be dead. This is this is a psychopath. This is a killer. But no. I wind up having to put her in a hotel room because she wasn't she wasn't old enough to get a room, so I wanted to make sure she was comfortable and I didn't want to leave her stranded. Please tell me that he got a separate room. Uh, since then, William's story has gone uh, viral. Will, uh, Uber tweeted out the good deed Tuesday shortly after his appearance on News Nation. I want to check this guy out, hear what he has to say. Adam says he took the top bunk. And she was calling her parents in panic. I had to explain to her parents that, hey, I'm not anyone crazy. I'm just trying to get your daughter somewhere safe. So I wind up having to put her in a hotel because she wasn't old enough to get a room by herself. So I wanted to make sure. She- okay, one second into the phone call, I'm like, honey, don't worry. He's gay. She was comfortable and I didn't want to leave her stranded. Oh, going above and beyond. Dante, that's such a nice thing for you to do. You didn't have to, but um, a teenager in distress, I'm sure her parents appreciated it. So a few hours in the car with somebody who's your family member is one thing, a stranger, quite another. What'd you guys talk about? So fashion. We we both had different conversations going on. She was on the phone with friends. I was. We love Billie Eilish so much. On the phone with my family, and my family thought, "Hey, you you're joking." And I literally had to turn my FaceTime to show them, "No, this I'm really sitting here." And it's we've been on the phone for about four hours now. Wow, <laughs> what what a mess! Um, in terms yeah. of food and water, did you have any? Did you see any emergency crews come by to try to help? 
So I didn't see any emergency crews. I started to see some plow trucks within the first four hours of me sitting there. Um, I, because I'm a wonderful Uber driver, I always carry. If you do say so yourself. <laughs> exactly. I agree with you after meeting you now. <laughs> I always carry water or some type of juice and I have crackers and stuff like that. So I had little stuff to get us over, but it, making sure the car stayed warm so she wasn't cold. It was, it was a lot. She wasn't cold. It was a lot. Yeah, but she was actually on her way home. She called up her mom and dad and said, don't worry, I am not code. No, that's great. Devante did an awesome job. Uh, Joe, Joey Go Blues says, still some humanity out there. Kyle Ryan says, uh, topics we talked about, what Beyonce wore on the red carpet. Kyle also adds, good thing it wasn't their son. <laughs> Kyle also adds, oh, it sounds, oh, good. It's, he sounds like he's not going to be into her. <coughs> oh, my God. It's so true. It's absolutely true. Come on. You see, all those jokes. Would have got me fired from the radio. All right. Been saving this story. Well, I actually was going to get to it earlier. It's part of the uh, Twitch tease and the little text to start the show. You're like, who is Lee Chatfield? Who's that guy? I think I remember hearing that name in the past. Who is Lee Chatfield? Lee is a 33-year-old man. Okay. Um, hang on a second here. He uh, used to be uh, a politician. Term limits ended his run as a uh, member of the state Congress of the great state of Michigan got into politics young and uh, he made quite an impression for Republican voters in this great state. They, he was the darling of the Republican party here in the great state. In fact, some would argue so young that he's got a great, uh, a great bright future of uh, ahead of him being that he got into the game so young, all right? Now, um, he also was the uh, former state house speaker uh, for the state of Michigan, which is uh, quite a lofty post. Well, it's all come crashing down as of this morning, last night, when this story broke. Uh, Lee Chatfield, you, you might also remember him. He was the uh, piece of shit who, when fuckhead Trump was uh, perpetuating the fake news about him winning the fucking election, this little fuck went to the White House with a bunch of other assholes uh, to try to help Trump try to overturn Biden's victory in the great state of Michigan. So he's one of these crazy fucking assholes. But still, a lot of these Republican pieces of shit love this guy. I'm guessing this is the end of the line. State police in northern Michigan were investigating Thursday after a woman has come forward. You know where this is going. Accusing former state house speaker Lee Chatfield of sexually assaulting her multiple times beginning when she was a child. For the past 10 years, this person has been brutalized 
by Lee Chatfield. According to her, she was 14 or 15 years old at the time. She's now 26. She's filed a criminal complaint with the Lansing Police Department, which referred it to the state police earlier in the week. Her lawyer, Jamie White, confirmed the nature of the allegations first re- uh, reported by Lansing City Pulse, uh, what do you call it, media publication, including that Chatfield began raping her more than a decade ago and the sexual conduct continued until last year. <laughs> State police spokesperson uh, Shannon Banner declined to provide any additional information. That's okay. It's going to come out. The alleged assaults began when the then 14 or 15 year old girl attended Northern Michigan Baptist Bible church and Northern Michigan Christian Academy near Burt Lake, about 60 miles Northeast of Traverse city. The attorney said the associated press does not typically identify people who say they are victims of sexual assault unless they choose to come forward publicly. Chatfield taught and coached at the school and was the athletic director between 10 and 14. According to his LinkedIn profile, his father is pastor of the church, the school superintendents, and uh, and the school superintendent and a teacher. Phone and text messages seeking comment were left by the AP Thursday night for fuckface Chatfield, who left the house in 2020 due to term limits. She did what she's supposed to do. She went to the immediate jurisdiction that she thought was appropriate, Attorney White said. Her and her family, they're working through it. They're looking forward to working with law enforcement to bring this allegation to conclusion and bring accountability for others that have been harmed. Chatfield, the youngest House Speaker in more than a century, is an asshole. Oh, I'm sorry. I misread it. Was the Republican leader for two years and and was among seven Michigan GOP lawmakers to who met with fuckhead Trump at the White House as Trump tried to overturn Democrat Joe Biden's win in the state. What an asshole, if it's true. I have to say that. I have to say if it's true. If these allegations hold water, it is very early. As much as I don't like to be fair in this case, I must... Be fair. I suspect this is true. But I cannot say for sure that this is true. But I'll be watching. Wow. This is a bombshell. Huge. Ugh. Sticks Swim Champ writes, um, first of all, Adam says he's going to be a big house speaker now. Sticks Swim Champ, he looks like a ventriloquist dummy came to life and started sexually assaulting everything. Referring to Chatfield? Yeah, no kidding. Take a look at this dude. There you go. That's him. He just got, he has a look on on his face that says, hey, you're young. You're about to get forcibly boned. The unholy look he had of a wooden doll come to life sticks with you. Pastor Rowdy Ron says, look at you. Trying your hardest to stay objective. LOL. (laughs) Yeah, it happens. Oh boy. Well, we'll keep an eye on that one. All right. I think I'm about done. Getting close. Getting close. We have the asshole of the day. No, I, I want I want to do one more thing. I have to show you the Jason Derulo clip. Give me a second. I need to take my time with this because if I screw it up, then five things will play at once. Then everyone will laugh at me, and it'll be awkward and stupid. All I know about this guy, he's a pop star, I guess. 
Cardiff, I see you. Next week. I can't do it right now. Okay. I love this. Some drama had happened. And uh, Jason Derulo is walking away. He's in this entourage in the back. Something's happened. And, uh, you know, they've separated them. But one of the peanut gallery refers to him in a hilarious way, which causes him to snap. And then he makes a beeline back to this peanut gallery to kick ass. Here you go. He is the only place Hollywood icons would send their kids. After this commercial, that will end in 25 seconds. For this shitty reality show. I'm buying time. 15 seconds. 10. Whatever happened to skip ads? 5 seconds. 4, 3, 2. Only on E. Hey, yo, why you slap him, dog? Hey, yo, why you slap him? Hey, Usher, fuck you, bitch. Why you slap him? Why you slap him? Why you slap him? Okay. Hey, Usher, fuck you, bitch, is what did it for this guy. And then look at the reaction. Hey, yo, why you slap him, dog? Hey, yo, why you slap him? Hey, Usher, fuck you, bitch. Why you slap him? Why you slap him? Why you slap him? Why you slap him? Hey, yo. Another view. Another view. Oh, sorry. I'm screwing this up again. Look at him. Okay. Now, it's a lot of chaos. It's a lot of chaos, but there's going to be a moment here when you see Usher come walking towards us, okay? And he lands a flying Superman punch to some guy and knocks him out. It's awesome. Usher throws a massive punch and knocks this dude out. I said Usher. Jason Derulo throws a massive punch. Okay, I'm going to start the whole thing over again. Hey, yo, why you slap him, dog? Hey, yo, why you slap him? Hey, Usher, fuck you, bitch. Why you slap him? Why you slap him? Why you slap him? Why you slap him? Hey, yo. Hey, Usher. Fuck you, bitch. Why you slap him? Why you slap him? Here he comes. Watch the guy in the red. That's Derulo. The fuck? Don't touch my boy. Here he comes. Watch us. Oh. Oh. He connected. He really knocked that guy out. Did you see him? Why you touch my boy? The fuck? Don't touch my boy. He's not fucking around. That was sweet. Oh, so awesome. Big punch, but the the insult. Hey, Usher, fuck you, bitch. (laughs) Uh, And then the comment, why can't people turn their damn phones when they record stuff? You're absolutely right. Okay, while I'm at it, I got to show you one more thing. It is a uh, catastrophic moment from China. And what you have here is this is a parking garage where it says Home Plus. All right. That is a parking garage. Some Uber driver, a really old man, uh, steps on the gas instead of the brake. And watch what happens. Oh! He goes flying out of the parking garage. That's five stories up. Look at... Wow. Okay, here it comes. 
Can you imagine just be walking down the street? Look at these people walking. There he goes. There you go. This is why old people can't drive. Uh, the dude did not survive. That was a fatality. Jason says, that's our Uber driver from Orlando. Oh, boy. Someone play the Dixie horn a la Dukes of Hazard for sure. All right. Okay. As I wind this show up on this beautiful Friday. Let me help your business. If you're listening to this podcast right now, uh, that's a, a perfect example. A lot of people are listening to this podcast. Thousands of people every single day uh, listen to and watch the podcast. Let me put your business front and center. It is uh, pennies on the dollar of what you'd spend with Facebook ads or radio or TV, which nobody buys ads for anymore. Uh, side side note: If you listen to any of my my, uh, my iHeart brother brethren's radio stations, they say, "Oh yeah, we're gonna take a break." Uh, Big one hundred one point three. We'll be back after this. Every commercial you hear is a commercial to listen to iHeart podcasts. So on the radio, they're telling you to listen to podcasts for their commercials. If that's not a sign of the times. I don't know what is. Oh my God. I want you on the podcast. You see right here, this, uh, look at my policy shop insurance, the tank. All these people are getting their messages seen and heard every single show. Irvine sponsors the studio dumpster divers. I'm doing this in the Baldwin Ace Hardware fear bunker studio. My sponsors keep coming back because it works. And it's very, very cost effective. About the only one who's not a satisfied customer is this guy right here, Jason Mays. Every so often, I get a, I get a text. He says, how come everybody else is getting their phone is ringing off the hook and not me? I go, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I don't even want to charge you for it. You guys got to call Jason Mays. If you need Amsoil products, you must. I mean, he sponsors a lot. He sponsors Dear Meat Ed. He sponsors uh, the asshole of the day. And he's always like, how oh, everybody else's phone is ringing and not mine. I, go, I don't know, man. I don't know what to tell you. It, it, I'm so sorry. So make, make Maze's phone ring for God's sake. He's, he's super hurt. He's walking around always. <laughs> Every day I get a phone call. And I'm like, hey, hello, Jason. How are you? I'm so hurt. No one's buying abs oil. <laughs> I know, man. I'm trying my best. I keep telling him about it. I'm beating him over the head with it. <laughs> they don't love me. They order BC pizza, but they don't give my, they don't give my oil. They go to Paul when he's hardware. They get their cars fixed in Irvine's. But they don't get any of the oil. <laughs> I've got audio of a conversation with me. This is me and Jason Mays. Hello? Hey. Yeah. Hey, Jason. Hi, Maddie. Uh, I, instead of Maddie, it's Jason. <laughs> well, What's up? You you sound like you're upset. I thought that no one's buying oil. I'm sitting here in Saranac. The lights are going out. I can't even pay an electrical bill. No one's buying oil. I'm a dumb hillbilly and I need those people to buy oil. Go to jamsynthetics.com. Okay, I was able to gather out of that something about your mother is upset because your DS case is missing and you can't find it anymore? No, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to jam some things. I can't find oil. Yeah, I don't know what you're saying. It's okay, Jason. We're going to be able to do it. We're going to be able to get the oil. Don't you worry about that. People are going to buy it. Just right now because you're you just got to hang in there, buddy, okay? Do you, you think it's gone forever? You, you think that, that you're never going to sell any more oil? No. 
that? Me too. I want to find uh, yeah. it too. I want I want you to sell some oil. <laughs> okay, well it's on you know. Jason, it's gonna be okay, buddy. We're gonna be able to sell some oil. Okay. Jason, it's it's gonna be okay. Jason. No. Jason. Six years ago. Jason. Jason. <laughs> that gets it. A... I was able to gather out of that. Okay. Sorry. Bennett Flooring Installation. You know what? I never get a phone call from Bennett's. <laughs> <coughs> this is why you got to keep listening for the ads. You never know when this good shit's going to happen. This is how I love my sponsors. I insult them. You know, when you listen to the radio, I, I got into the radio, the, or I got in the car the other day. I was going to Irvine's. This is just before the fight with Diana when I lost my Pooh Bear points. Got in the car just as the music ended. And uh, they said, uh, we'll be back. And then they started playing commercials. And they, they they played like nine minutes of these ads that aren't anything like this. That's what makes these ads so different because it's me talking as opposed to voiceover music who you don't know. It's just background noise. There's no value into it whatsoever. None. Bennett Flooring Installation. I want you to rip out the old flooring, prepare the surface. Bennett comes over, measure measures the room. They give you an estimate how much it's going to cost. This is the absolute least expensive way to have it professionally done. So you're you're not getting all those bells and whistles like uh, uh, them removing all the old stuff, hauling it out. You're doing that. It's it's half DIY. But if you've never done flooring or never put it down, ooh, uh, you know, just spend a little bit more money than what you would normally and have the pros do it. Because then it doesn't look like fuck. Have Bennett Flooring Installation do it. If you're in the West Michigan area, they'll come to your place and measure. It's all you got to do. It doesn't cost anything to get the measurement. But they're going to try to get that bid from you. 616-318-0167. Uh, Jacob One Word Bennett will uh, contact you and help you out. 616-318-0167. Measure the room. Get you an estimate. That's all complimentary. Do it when you want to put the flooring down. The flooring that you actually put down needs to be purchased. From Johnson's Carpet One Floor and Home Discount Outlet. Two stores. There's the main store and the discount outlet. Darwin, the boss, told me we are pushing the discount outlet hard. The main store, leave alone, stress the discount outlet, Eric Zane. First step in your flooring adventure. Buying the new stuff. This is where you get it. If you're in West Michigan... Head here, and here's why. You will not find a price cheaper on flooring. Doesn't matter. The only way you can get it cheaper is if you steal it. Darwin has purchased massive quantities of this stuff, and he stores it in this warehouse. Aesthetically, it looks like a barn in the middle of Granville uh, off Chicago Drive behind Little Caesars. Pull up. The handful of bros that work there. Kent dropped the E at a U. Zaniac. Uh, what, what is he again? What type of uh, Green Party Kent? No, Libertarian Kent. Kent the Libertarian. I'm a Libertarian. What is that? Uh, we'll take you to the store. Now, this is not aesthetically pleasing inside of there. Okay? It's a warehouse stacked to the gills with everything you could ever want. But that doesn't matter. You're going to find something amazing for a ridiculously cheap price. 
and then you're going to leave with it right then and there. Bring a truck. Bring a truck. Man, they are the best. Absolute cheapest prices at Johnson's Carpet One Floor and Home Discount Outlet. And, and, best part, mention my name to Kent the Libertarian, and he'll knock 10% off the price. You have to say it. You have to say, I heard about this on Eric Zane's show. He is an asshole. That's what you say to him. And he's going to go, I know I'm giving you 10% off. That is a set in stone deal. The deepest discount in the history of flooring. If there was not a 10% savings, it would still be the cheapest. This is ridiculous. All right. Lastly, before we get to the asshole of the day, brought to you by (laughs) and TC Paintball. We have a paintball war scheduled for January 30th. That is a Sunday at 5 p.m. I busted balls yesterday on some of you about coming to the event. One of you responded. It was, coincidentally, Jason Mays. Jason will be playing paintball. How does he... How do you shoot paintball with all those tears clouding up the mask? Seems like it would be difficult. No wonder why you stink. (laughs) Thank you, Jason. I'll see you on January 30th. We're 23 days away from the paintball war number 17. Still haven't thought of a name for it. Maybe something to do with Jason Mays. The Trail of Tears Challenge, Paintball War 17. The Trail of Tears Challenge, starring Jason Mays. That's it. Let me write that down. Paintball War 17, The Trail of Tears Challenge. Starring Jason Mays. So before we start playing paintball... Jason is going to slick up the paint surface by crying on the surface, on the paintball surface. And then it'll get real like the footing will be, it'll be more difficult. It's a home field advantage for Jason because he's used to walking on slippery floors from his tears. (laughs) Oh my God. I'm so sorry. The tarantula farmer also reached out and kicked me off of the paintball team. I was supposed to do that event with him. He uh, peer pressured me into it in March. Well, he reaches out to me and says, hey, you don't have to play now. I've got two people that are taking your spot. I go, are you sure? Yeah. And I go, well, okay. Are you playing paintball on January 30th? uh, When we do paintball war number 17, the trail of tears challenge. And he said, oh, yeah, I'll be there. Now, in the back of my head, I'm like, well, did you ignore when I said I need an email? I'm trying to get a head count for this event. He goes, oh, yeah, I'll be there. Me plus two. Uh, In fact, make it three. It'll be four of us. And I'm like, okay, cool. I am not kidding when I ask you to send me an email to RSVP. That's all I need. If you're coming, let me know. So whether you're the Schaefers, if you're you're planning on coming Schaefers, you got to, you got to send me an email. I got to know these things. If you're not don't, and I'll know, but I don't, I mean, I got to establish a head count for the event. I don't like stressing out over this shit. This is, I don't get stressed out about much these days, but paintball wars I do. Uh, I'm going to talk to the Honduran to see if we can have another border war. I'm going to get a fresh supply of MAGA hats and see if we can have the Latinos on one side, the MAGA hatters on the other, and then do the border war. I mean, we've got a lot of great storylines in Paintball War 17, the Trail of Tears Challenge featuring Jason Mays. Paintball War 17 at TC Paintball. 
Send me an email, Eric, E-R-I-C, Eric at EricZaneShow.com. And schedule a party on your own, if you like, at TC Paintball for you and the gang. You will have so much fun. What a premier attraction for fun and entertainment at TC Paintball. Online at TCPaintballGR.com. Tarantula Pharmacist Zane, you better be on my team. That's all I'm saying. What? I did nothing wrong. I have done nothing wrong today. Before we get to the asshole of the day, I got a phone call. Jason Mays. He's working right now. He's probably furious. Jason, pick it up. Jason Mays. Independent 616-747-0233. Pick up. Your call is ah. into an automated voice messaging system. <laughs> Get the phone. The phone's too slippery. The phone's too slippery. <laughs> he says he's at work. Come on now, you don't work. You just drive around. Okay, would, would, would you guys uh, end the trail of tears by calling him, okay? Go to jmsynthetics.com. There's a phone number right there. Pick out what you want to buy. Call the phone number or text it and, uh, you know, help the guy out for God's sake. He is the only sponsor who is not satisfied. Not satisfied with what he has signed up for. Help this man out. He says, I still work for the man, unfortunately. We don't want you to. We want you at home being sensitive. All right. The asshole of the day. Your suggestions, please, on the asshole of the day. I would love to hear them. Thank you to Pastor, no, instead of Pastor, Reverend Rowdy Ron. That makes, that sounds better. Reverend Rowdy Ron, the genesis and the metamorphosis of the nickname for Reverend Rowdy Ron. Uh, I'm concerned about Madison traveling in the snow. I lost all my Pooh Bear points. Saul, the joke judge. On the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast. Um, Antonio Brown overload. Bruce Arians, the only fan skank who licks toilets. AB putting his bank info out. Reverend Rowdy Ron joined us. The NFL tie scenario. We got to root for the Jags. Gay Uber driver. Puts the family at ease by getting the uh, young girl home. Taxi madness. Jason Derulo slash ushers fight. And Lee Chatfield is fucked. Who is going to be? And I made fun of Jason Mays historically on this very podcast. All right. Um, I thought he was an asshole back then, and I still think he's an asshole now. Um, and it doesn't help matters that he's being charged with rape. Lee Chatfield is your hard and fast asshole of the day. Fuck this guy. What a piece of shit. Leading up to yesterday's revelation. Congratulations, Lee Chatfield. You are the asshole of the day. There you go. And that is the conclusion of the Eric Zane Show podcast, the free podcast for this, the 7th of January, 2022.
Thank you so much for being part of it. I will just conclude by uh, letting you know that, as, as always, you can download the audio podcast wherever you download podcasts, whatever platform that you download it on. Spotify, most do Apple Podcasts, subscribe to it. Hit the subscribe button on it, okay? So you're never without a show. It's in your library. It's ready to go. And extremely important, this doesn't cost you anything. Uh, Follow me on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Eric Zane Live. E-R-I-C Zane Live. All one word. It is so incredibly helpful when you do that. When I get more followers, okay, that costs you nothing. And when you go to that spot, it'll say Twitter, Patreon, all these different things you can click on, links. One of them is a bright red button that says Twitch Prime. Sign up for free. That gives you more perks, okay? Normally, people pay five bucks for that. You get it free with your Amazon Prime account. That is a subscription. To the tier one uh, membership on Twitch. Gets you access to all of the uh, 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 emotes and things like that. And frankly, I don't even know what the hell else it does. But I'm told it helps. That it makes your... I I think you'll be without ads or something like that. It makes your viewing experience much more pleasurable. And it helps your old pal Eric Zane. So thank you so much. Um, Okay, that's going to do it. And... uh, I'll raid you over somewhere. I, I don't know if Ron is, uh, is, is on Twitch right now, but I'll check that out. Thanks, folks. I appreciate you. Until next time. Bye-bye. Talk to you on Patreon.